So let's look at approaching delta from the perspective of uh, trying to define it as a distribution. So the whole uh, point, or the, the introductory point here, that is a, a microcosm of the whole point for distributions, is the fact that if I try to take this limit, the limit of these rectangle functions, these are the normalized rectangle functions of area 1, with width from minus epsilon to epsilon, if I try to take that as a pointwise limit, it's not going to make a lot of sense. It's not going to be useful. Okay, so instead we look at how it integrates against a test function. We still don't know if we need to be careful about what we choose test functions to look like, and in one second we will start to discover some of the restrictions we need to put on it. Okay, because even here, if you do that, unless you assume something about phi, this is still not going to work. Okay, because what is this? This is the limit. Because this is such a special function, this is just averaging over the interval from minus epsilon to epsilon of phi. Now, the average values of a decently nice function are going to converge as that uh, the interval over which you're averaging gets smaller and smaller. But if phi, instead of being some nice continuous function, was maybe like random values assigned to every, every real number, for example, then there's no reason those averages are going to converge to anything much less something that's really appropriate. If you don't want to get so wacky, we could look at, say, this step function. Then the average values on the symmetrical interval would converge to 1 half. Well, that's not such a uh, totally unreasonable thing to do to sort of split the difference here. But uh, it's definitely not equal to any value of this function. And that's a little bit suspicious. So, and we'll come back to that example in a minute to see why this even this function is really not good enough for a test function. But let's assume, so not, not guaranteed to exist. And if it does exist, it might be something that's a little bit suspicious. Uh, okay, so two, let's assume that oh, this is this one a actually sorry this is two this is one b just looking at my cheat sheet here okay now let's assume phi is continuous and in fact for the rest of time pretty much we're going to assume that our test functions are continuous and that's okay we are inventing this theory we get to decide it how nice potential the test functions have to be and this is a very mild condition okay so now we're going to look at this limit again Okay, and now we're just going to use almost exactly the argument, actually a streamlined, simplified version of the argument we had when we were looking at convolutions. It's a very similar idea, and it will lead to a, a cool relationship between convolutions and the delta function. It's just that the averages between the min and the max of this function, and these min and max will actually exist because it's a continuous function, and this is a closed bounded interval. Um, and as epsilon goes to zero, then these are going to squeeze down to phi of 0. And therefore, that's going to squeeze to phi of 0. It's going to limit to phi of 0. So we're getting that it should be phi of 0. That's another reason why this is, even though this is not the world's worst function, and the limit of this will exist, it's not going to give us this nice relationship that the average, this limit of how these um, window functions integrate against phi, usually they're going to give phi of 0. Here, they give something in between phi of 0 and some other kind of fictional value for phi of 0. And that's another reason why even this is not an acceptable test function. So, slightly more generally, exactly the same proof tells us that the limit of, if we take, let's say, something based symmetrically around A, so here they're at near A, and they're getting closer and closer and closer, trying to make a spike at A, then this is just going to be phi of A. Okay. So this is really nice. It's telling us even though these things don't have a limit as a function, if we consider it as something that eats test functions, a distribution, it's something that does ex something extremely simple to that function. It just evaluates at a point. Evaluating a function at a point is about the simplest thing you can do to a function. It's just that now we're doing that to the test function, not trying to evaluate 
the the delta, which is not really going to be a function at all. Okay, so um, we really, really, it's really, really important for part C. The point here is that this is an idealization. We're trying to create this delta spike as a new kind of object. That's a certain cost we're incurring conceptually, but it's supposed to be an idealization that strips away unnecessary complexity of another sort, namely how wide is the pulse and like what shape is the pulse exactly. And so it's really crucial that it truly be a simplification. This is one of the themes I want to keep going with. Okay, so in other words, I definitely don't want to have a situation where uh, I have like one kind of delta, you know, like vanilla flavor delta, which is the, the limit, oops, I'm going to try to draw a symmetrical pulse, but it's not, a limit of certain symmetrical pulses. And then here's a uh, strawberry flavored delta, which is the limit of asymmetrical rectangles. And here's the yummy chocolate delta, which is like the limit of a bunch of Gaussian pulses. That's horrible. We definitely don't want that situation. So we want to make sure that any kind of reasonable way of approaching delta does approach the same object. Um, and that's will be a nice little warm up in sort of limits of functions and things like that. And I think I need to switch to one of my better markers. It's getting away. Okay. Oh, that's not so great either. Um, so let's first look at the limit. Very simple warm up for this is we'll just look at the limit, let's say, and I'm going to drop the minus infinity to infinity here just to make it quicker to write things. Um, oh, let's let's look at the limit of a right-handed one, so zero to epsilon rectangle pulse. Okay, and is that the same as the left-handed pulse, and is it the same as the symmetrical pulse that we just had? Oops, or minus epsilon to epsilon. And absolutely, they're all equal to phi of zero. And it's still easy because these are all averages, right? This is still the average just from zero to epsilon of phi. And this is the average from uh, minus epsilon to zero. And you can run exactly the same argument and just by continuity, which is still absolutely necessary, um, you get the same answer. And this again explains why we would never want this to be a test function this is really the killer argument for why this can't be a test function, or one of the one of the big arguments, because these averages would give you zero. Sorry, these would give you one. These would give you zero. They'd be averaging here, and this one gives you one half. They wouldn't give you the same answer for this test function if you allowed it, and we're not going to allow that. So a really big reason. This is a really good reason to remember why are we requiring test functions to be continuous? This is a very simple case that shows you you better have that or else you're really not inventing the right kind of idealization. Okay, so now we want to show more generally uh, that really kind of any kind of pulsy thing, if you make that, if you take that same shape and you make it narrower and taller so that the integral, the key is the integral, let's say it has a parameter epsilon. I'm going to tell you how to define this in a second. As long as the area is always equal to 1, because remember that in the physical application, that was the total momentum transfer. If you have this a sequence of shapes for your hammer blow that get narrower and narrower, but change the momentum transfer, change the area as you go, you don't expect in our physical situation for that to approach a limit meaningfully. So they've got to have this be constant. That's been true in all the examples so far because those rectangular pulses with the little r's are designed to have area 1. Okay? So how are we going to define design this? So first we're going to take f of x to be one particular shape. And for simplicity, you don't have to do this in general, but it makes it easier with the proofs, proof techniques we have at this point, or that I'm assuming we have at this point, to have it supported on minus 1 to 1. So the support of f is inside minus 1 to 1. That just means f of x equals 0 if x is less than minus 1 or x is greater than 1. Okay. Um, actually, really, it's 0 actually at the at minus 1 and 1 
as well. Okay, so it is totally zero out here and zero out here. So it is really a pulse, a limited pulse. Okay, and then we're going to assume, uh, then we're going to define f epsilon of x to be, we're going to shrink it so that this is going to be supported. It's pretty easy to show that this is supported from minus epsilon to epsilon. So as epsilon goes to zero, that's going to shrink this in the width. But then we have to make it taller. And the claim, the first part that you're asked to prove, is a very simple change of variables. Just u equals x over epsilon shows you that this guy integrated from minus infinity to infinity again, or in other words, using the notation, this guy, those are all equal to 1. OK, so it's exactly this kind of picture. Have a fixed shape, make it narrower and taller. All right, and I'm not assuming f is nice except for this condition. And this is really just to make it uh, the proof work. You have to assume very little about f here. We have to assume that we can integrate it. Um, but I'm not assuming it's continuous. You know, For example, our examples so far have been these discontinuous functions. Okay. So remember, the point here is not to have our f's be nice or the things they're limiting to be nice. Um, because we're trying to create a delta function out of them after all. But the fees are supposed to be nice. And whenever we need, really feel we need to assume that they're maybe nicer than we thought, we're going to go for that. Okay. Now, uh, I kind of lied here. For make a really simple proof and have intuition that's a little bit more like what I've been saying, we're going to assume it's greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Just for now. Okay, probably through the end of this video, so this video doesn't get too long now. Okay, and we'd like to show that this limits to a delta function. We'd like to say that this equals delta. And what is this statement going to mean? So this is going to be a good introduction to say, what does it mean for two distributions to be equal? And more, more subtly, what does it mean for the limit of a sequence of distributions to equal some fixed distribution? It's just the same exact notion, it, you always eat, have them eat test functions. Their job is to eat test functions. So the meaning of this statement is going to be defined by saying, and what if this is going to be general, very, very general thing, where this is any distribution. Right now, these are functions, and it happens to limit to a, a non-function distribution, but it's going to be a very general thing. Okay. It should mean that when you eat phi, when the phi epsilons eat phi and you look at the limit, that's the same thing as delta eating that phi, and that's the notation we're going to have for a general distribution eating a test function. And of course, we have just defined basically what that is supposed to be. We now know that that's supposed to just give you phi of zero. Okay. So that's what we want to show. We want to show this equality pretty much no matter what f starts out to be. Okay. So... Because of the greater than or equal to zero, we can still think of this in terms of averages. Okay. Um, so, oops. All right. So the um, this limit, this guy here. Okay. This is still a weighted average because you're taking a bunch of positive values, integrating them. Uh, multiplying them by values of phi and integrating, and because the integral of this guy is equal to 1, it's exactly just a weighted average of values of phi. Now, that intuition won't work in general when f is, has positive and negative values, but I really like using this intuition where it's available. Okay, And so we should be able to show, even though it's a, a weighted average, it's still a kind of an average, it should be between the min of phi, this guy, and the max of phi on the interval where it's not equal to 0. Because after all, this is technically an integral from minus infinity to infinity to not prejudge where it should be integrated. But because of f epsilon being supported from minus epsilon to epsilon, it's just going from minus epsilon to epsilon. So, OK. And once we have this, we can run the exact same argument. We know that these guys go to phi of 0. OK, and this is not hard to show just by monotonicity of integrals. We know that uh, f epsilon of x, phi of x dx, 
that's going to be less than or equal to, okay, just take some function that's guaranteed to be bigger than this on the appropriate interval, okay. I'm just going to replace this with its maximum on that interval. That's a constant function. And similarly, to get something that's guaranteed to be smaller, I just replace it with its minimum, Oops. the minimum of phi on minus epsilon to epsilon. Okay, and <clears throat> that's this is only possible to write this out because the f epsilons are positive or non-negative. Otherwise, the inequalities would get switched or messed up. Okay, and now I can just take these guys out. That's a constant. So you get the min times the integral, and here's where we use the fact that that's equal to 1. So this is just this. Here's the thing we want it to bound, the weighted average. And then the same argument runs over here. This guy comes out, the integral's 1, and you just get the max. And then we can run the same argument by continuity of phi. Okay. So, uh, interesting thing to think about, uh, why does this, why is, it, why is there another argument that's going to work when f epsilon doesn't have to be negative? Um, and it's not quite as slick, but it's, it's not a lot harder, but I'll save it for the next video.